Hi guys, how are you? My this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Don't forget to come down, like, and subscribe uh, the video below and subscribe to Real Macro uh, Economics and Investing. All right, so special edition of Bitcoin. What the hell's going on? Everybody's talking about it. <laughs> uh, you know, the perma bears are equally as annoying as the perma bulls. Honestly, they're just, uh, and, and it's not just in Bitcoin. It's just you see them more in Bitcoin. But um, both are equally as, as annoying. All right, so let's just get down to it. All right, number one on a log, uh, it's not a big deal, okay? Uh, what you want to look at uh, in, a, in a bear market, and let's call this a bear market. It's down 16% from the highs or whatever it is. All right. What you want to look at is not a log. You want to see how much damage was done, because this is a little bit misleading. All right. And how is it misleading? Well, if you measure the top to bottom, what you're going to see is an 84% drop. Okay. This is an 84% drop. But yet, when you look at all the other price action, you 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 think it's just a small little pullback. Well, it's not. Okay, and that's why you got to take it off of log. You can use it for log. You want to see what the damage is. And something that I always say, remember, no matter how high an asset goes, it doesn't matter. Name the digit. No matter how high, it's always 100% from zero. Okay, remember that. It's very important. So let's take a look at it at a log, right? And you see that there's a lot more damage that is showing now um, just from this 16% pullback. But is it, is this it? Is it over? No. <laughs> it's just a pullback. What happens at double tops? What happens? You get a pullback. Is it the double top? I don't know. I don't think so. If this is the double top, could be. All right. But that remains to be seen. Now, bare knuckle charting is something that I created, right? Um, it's just what I've seen repetitively in charts. Uh, and that's what I've been showing you guys live uh, on video, dynamically, okay, on the li live chats. Uh, and it works, okay, it works. It's just that simple. It's not something that, oh, look at the RSI and the moving average and the V, you know, <laughs> and MACD and the crossing here and oh, look at over here. It's nothing like that. It's just about reading a chart. It's, it's that simple. So we're going to go through this exercise and we're going to see what the market is telling us. OK, now um, something that we've known about Bitcoin was ever since it became popular and big banks are dealing with it and so forth, uh, trading and, and, and so forth. What you want to do is you want to go back in time and you want to you want to see what Bitcoin has performed relative to NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the market leader in terms of indices, right? So if you go back in time, what you're going to see is that right about here, right, that they were behaving in the same manner, right? About 1.0, more or less, right in here, okay? So if the market went up, uh, Bitcoin went up, if the market went down, Bitcoin went down, uh, and so forth. That's fine. And then we got this great news that uh, uh, PayPal is accepting Bitcoin. And and it's, you know, on the surface, on the bullish case, you might say, yeah, but it's just it's just PayPal. Yeah, well, it could be PayPal to, today. Tomorrow it could be Amazon. So there are, you know, th there's a lot of avenues that, that, that can make Bitcoin much more um much more viable right as a as a currency all right so we we've seen that it popped out right so a lot of great news came out and it popped out and wonderful and what is it doing now well it's testing the previous high set back in july in july of 2019 so more reason why you would see a pullback right more reason why you would see a pullback now I'm going to show it to you in a different way. I'm going to show you Bitcoin, right? It's still Bitcoin divided by NASDAQ. And what you're going to see is in a bear charting uh, 
way of uh, understanding charts, and it's not Elliott wave, and it's not something to that effect. It's just a very simple count of one, two, three. Okay, so you have the structure. Uh, you see what the structure shows. You got to have a hook, right? You got to have that hook. And once you understand it, then it, that, that it produces some kind of a structure. Then you look at the structure, and then you're saying, okay, well, it's it's a wedge. It's a corrective wedge. This is this is the compass, right? This is our compass. It came from the bottom left to the top right. This is a one, right? That's our compass. Then we go into a corrective move, right? This is a two, and then the the resulting move is a three up okay so from this perspective and from this perspective this move is a valid move out of structure and it and it implies that price will go much higher okay now remember this is a weekly chart and it goes all the way back to 2015 this whole thing is back to 2015 so don't be expecting uh, something to happen tomorrow the only thing that this shows us very simply is that there was a breakout in terms of the uh, Bitcoin versus the Nasdaq that's it that's all it showed us okay so we validated based on that all right so now let's go to Bitcoin and just look at Bitcoin uh, in of itself and here it is again, all right, it's Bitcoin USD. And what we're seeing now is an, a very nice kind of cup and handle, right? A W formation right in here that should break to the upside, all right? This is on a log. If you take it off a log, it looks much different, okay? Um, so now we're gonna go down to the daily and we're gonna look at it with my drawings in here and here is my charting. Now, again, you see the same one, two, three breakout. Okay, so that's valid. The next thing you're going to notice is that you have another one, two, three here, which is a one, two, three. The three was not validated till today. Okay, why? Because you never know when a wave is going to end. You never know that. Okay, it has to end and reverse and there has to be sufficient amount of a hook right and a price action to the downside to validate this point remember there's three waves and four points so this is point number one point number two point number three and point number four point number four cannot be known until there's a hook so now we know that this entire structure is a rising wedge right it's told us what the structure looks like once we understand the, the structure and once we understand that it's valid, now what we need to do is figure out where the best risk rewards are based on what you want to do, all right? And, and that's dictated by price, right? It's not guessing. You don't just randomly guess, oh, I'm gonna buy here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna sell here, I'm gonna... No, you don't do that. And again, that's the beauty of bare knuckle charting, that it's gonna show you where the key areas are once they are once they are created all right so there's no way you could have known that this was going to be a top in of itself meaning within this structure so what else could you use to figure out if you should if you should sell or not all right so i showed you the previous chart with the nasdaq and we were testing that previous high that's one Let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's look at it from a monthly close. From a monthly close, let me get rid of this. From a monthly close, we broke all time highs. All right, we broke it and continued higher. Now what happens at previous highs? Previous highs is a potential uh, risk of reversal or pause. Okay, that's what happens at previous highs. We went far above it far above it on a monthly so that's one another one on a weekly close well look what happened on a weekly close on a weekly close we came just shy of it okay just shy of it in fact we could probably argue that it went through it and then came back down but on a weekly close 
you have what? Double top. Right there. Okay? Now, last week, based on this analysis, I told my subscribers that I am reducing my size in Bitcoin. And it was something about 17,800, right? Why? Well, based on this analysis, all right? So then I reduced it. And then it went up to 19.5. Ah, uh, uh, you know, uh, they got it wrong, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm not wrong now, am I? Right? Again, it's the analysis tells you what to do. It's, it's not about guessing. If, if you're sitting there trying to guess as to what Bitcoin is going to do, you, you're a degenerate gambler. You're wasting your time. All right. So let's look at the same chart now, but with the previous high. And what you'll see is we came up, turn that, right? We came up, we tagged it, and boom, straight down. We tagged it for two days, and then everything collapsed. All right? So you see that, right? Let me take that out. Boom, boom, comes down. All right, fair enough, no big deal. It's not the end of the world. That's what it's supposed to do. From a bare knuckle charting perspective, and there's a lot of people that say this as well, double tops, right? You, you should sell them. You get a pullback, but that's valid, and that's why it's part of bare knuckle charting. It's not that I invented it. It's true. It's true. All right, so uh, the next analysis. As I said yesterday on the live um, video, this is a tight, 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 what do we call in bare knuckle charting, right? It's tight, 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 break. That's what happens. That's why I don't like euphoric moves. Euphoric moves in price is just an advertising mechanism. That's all it is. It's, it's designed to get people extremely excited, okay, to, to provoke emotions and then get those emotions to get you to do something um, that is not in your best interest. So, you know, Think about the analysis so far. We had the monthly close, we had the weekly close, uh, we had the daily double topping. Uh, we have the structure that was tight, tight, tight. Uh, we knew it, it was in a wave three, okay? It did break out of structure. Uh, remember, uh, in structures, okay, uh, once they're formed, uh, the way that they break matters, okay? So it broke here, came back, tested, and went, all right? So the, the move is going to be to the upside, all right? And if you look at the compass, right, the compass was showing you that this is one, this is two, and three was coming. It wasn't a secret, all right? So like I told you yesterday in the video, in the live chat, I said, look for about uh, the first target area, and let me come down to a smaller one. Look for the first target area about 16.5, something to that, or that range. And then look for, if this breaks, then look for the next move all the way down about 14.5. Okay? Why? Because this is a tight, 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 tight. Boom. Comes down. All right. Now, if it were to come all the way to the bottom, the bias is to the upside. If price comes all the way down here, then you want to take this one to the upside. If, on the other hand, it starts to consolidate just above it or just below it, okay, and it's not going to be as pretty as this, but once if it starts to consolidate and then breaks, okay, then you're looking for further downside, all right? And this is what I mean. Don't guess as to what it's going to do. Let price go to where it needs to go. Then take the, the, the most probable, not possible, probable trade. And so long as it remains within this structure, the probability is it gets one more up, okay? If it breaks, then the probability is it comes down. Now, something to note about bare knuckle charting, waves, points, and structures. Structures are designed to fool you. They're going to go up, they're going to go sideways or down, they're going to go up. Everything is going to look like it's going up. You get all bullish up here, and then it does the opposite. Okay? And then it's going to create another structure. And it's going to look like this. And then you're going to get all bearish down here. And then it's going to do this. All right? And that's what it does. It, it, it works in basketball, soccer, football. Deking works. It always works. 
you can it's timeless and that's what price does uh, in, in stock and asset prices it deeks people and that's why bare knuckle charting works because you can see the deeks and you can see the probability of which way it's going to go based on the way it breaks it was not a secret to us that this was going to resolve to the upside to bare knuckle charters it was not uh, it was never even a doubt it's just the way it's going to be now is it going to happen tomorrow next week next month no you got to wait you got to be patient you got to look for the good good trades okay uh but we were involved we were involved in bitcoin since below 5500 go back and look at my old videos about bitcoin and you'll see that i was saying bye 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 below 5500 and i also called the top and why did i call the top because you get the m patterns right these m patterns are topping this is what a top looks like this is not even close to a topping pattern in bitcoin this time around it may be at some point in the future for right now it's not this is not a topping pattern this is an emotional let me get you to sell uh let me get you to go short kind of move that's all that is it's not a topping pattern so if you're fearful if you're freaking out if you're like oh my god you know i gotta sell because everybody else is selling and look at this and oh look at all the negative comments on twitter if you're behaving in that in that manner because of this you're wasting your time you're you're being fooled all right don't don't let that happen so you know learn how to do this properly if you're going to sit here and you're going to invest your money learn how to do it properly come down to patreon.com slash real macro and subscribe <laughs> but uh, again for you know i i can literally chart bitcoin far better than i can other markets because other bitcoin is not manipulated in the same way that other markets are and when i say manipulated i don't mean six guys sitting in a dark room with one light uh, sitting there pushing buttons that's not what i'm saying i'm talking about qe i'm talking about deficits i'm I'm talking about these kind of things, the, the well-known things. But getting back to the analysis, you're either going to get something to the effect like this. Okay. This can possibly happen, a pause, which would end up being a high base. This is not a bad thing. This is actually a good thing. It will correct through time rather than price. Okay. And what I mean by price is... Uh, the likelihood that it comes all the way back here and then goes back up that would be correcting through price and that would still be bullish still be bullish if it came down because then it would be a break test go you understand this would be a break test go break test go and off it goes to the moon all right so that's by price and then you correct through time through time is something like this it starts building pressure 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 and then boom off it goes all right um there's a number of ways that this can can work out but again so long as it remains within the structure your bias is to the upside in fact if you wanted to buy bitcoin you want to do it somewhere down here if you wanted to get involved all right what if it breaks well look it's very simple if it breaks then you can stop out so you lose this much versus gaining this much at the very least okay so that's the that's the again that's the difference right you, you don't know you don't have a crystal ball you don't know what's going to happen but i'm just telling you that this is not a top the bias is still to the upside at some point this structure this structure here is going to correct whether it be through time or price i i don't know how it's going to end up looking like but it will uh correct okay from this structure and then you'll probably get some other structure that's going to look something like this which is going to point down it's going to fool everybody and then it's going to go up okay so that's another way it can go out either way either way this is a wave three breakout from a wave two and this little pullback that everybody's crying about and oh my god you know look how stupid they are the bitcoiners ha 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 they're idiots they don't know what they're talking about they can't read a chart to save their lives they, they just they're morons lastly i'm going to give you with two i'm going to leave you with two scenarios the one scenario is if this were to completely fail and it can this can completely fail if this were to completely fail then i promise you that the rest of the market will be failing 
equally as much. So that means NASDAQ, S&P, Dow, everything is crashing. And this would be a sell everything rally. Just like it's a, it was a buy everything rally, it's going to be a sell everything from the rally. All right. Uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be a lot bigger problems than just Bitcoin. Believe me. If that were to happen, then that would give legitimacy to this double top. Right. Because then you're saying, okay, double top reversal. And you know what? Everything is coming down. Uh, but there's ways to know which is which, right? If this is going to happen or the other is going to happen, there's ways to know these things. Remember, Bitcoin is a risk on asset for right now. Uh, now the bullish case is that again, I'm going to say it that tomorrow Amazon comes down and says, yes, we accept Bitcoin. And then many other, uh, areas start to come in, uh, of the market that say, yes, we accept Bitcoin. All right. Now that would lead us into something unique uh, for our times, but not unique in history. That would lead us into a dual currency system. Something that is makes a lot of sense. Number one, uh, I'm not an expert on dual currencies, but I can tell you that they worked in the past. Uh, and the way we are printing money worldwide is so excessive that I can, I can possibly imagine, possibly, not probably, possibly imagine going into a dual currency system and it doesn't necessarily have to be bitcoin but the fact in the news of talking about a dual currency system would give a lot of validity to bitcoin which would push bitcoin much much higher so it's important for you to understand that i'm not saying there's going to be hyperinflation i'm not saying people are going to give up the dollar i'm not i'm not saying any of these things i am just that 